How should someone who has recovered from COVID handle the calculation between the uncertainty of lasting natural immunity versus the risks of a vaccine? Wait, this was about someone who has recovered from yeah. COVID? Yeah. If it were me, um, I would not try to be first, second, or third in line for the vaccine. Um, I mean, it depends on how forward-facing your work is. Um, yeah, I, I got to say, I don't understand why we haven't had this conversation. Should people who have had COVID be getting this at all? Well, that's uh, so presumably, um, and I actually don't remember what's in that um, New England Journal of Med Medicine paper with the 40 plus thousand volunteers. None of them, I, they, I think that they made sure that they were looking at naive participants who mm -hmm. had not been exposed, who had not tested positive for COVID. So I think the answer to this is, at least so far as I know, we have no idea what the vaccine might do um, if you've if you've already had it. Um, is it, you know, exactly as safe, which is to say hopefully very safe and maybe not, but um, much less effective because it's only building on natural immunity you already have? Um, is it really hardly effective at all uh, because you've already got all the efficacy that your immune system is going to have because you've already been exposed? Both of those are possibilities. Well, let's put it this way. What we do think we know Mm -hmm. is that at least on this time scale, very few people get COVID twice. Yeah. So if that's the case, yeah. and the dangers here exist by virtue of the fact that we don't know what happens, never mind whether it has a different, I mean, not never mind, but you know, it's a secondary layer of consideration whether there's some effect that comes to people who've had COVID because their immune systems aren't naive and will look at the virus, uh, look at the vaccine differently. That's a likely thing. Yeah. But before you ever get there, the good of giving people who've already had COVID this vaccine is pretty small as long as their immunity from COVID lasts. And so we shouldn't be experimenting on anybody when A, there's not enough vaccine to go around, and B, we don't have any idea what the hazards are. The, you know, At the very least, we've got a large number of people who've had COVID and they shouldn't need this. So, and then you know, this gets right to the question, which is, there is going to be some kind of draconian, you're not allowed to do these things, whether travel. it's air travel yeah. or go to a concert or whatever, unless you can establish that you've had this vaccine. And is that the reason that we're going to expose people who have had COVID to a vaccine that, as far as we know, they don't need and might never need? In that order to come out of lockdown? In order yeah. to make sure that everybody has some card that says they've been vaccinated? This is insane. Um, so we should absolutely, and you know, if we had been slower on the testing front, we would have tested against different groups. There were a lot of people who were excluded apparently from this study. It wasn't that big a study. Mm -hmm. And in order to be able to see the effects, this was very limited who it was, who it was given to. And so there's a lot we don't know about how this will interact with other, other parameters. And there's really no excuse for us seeking to vaccinate everybody, especially a category of people who have effectively been vaccinated by the virus itself.